I really like this because what does this do? It helps the NBA when it comes to flopping. I, I Adam Silver, I think he's put everything in the players' hands, and they've given he's really given them everything that they wanted. But I think these rules actually benefit the league and actually benefits certain teams against certain players. LeBron James has been a flopper over the years. Paul George has been a flopper during the years. James Harden has been a flopper during the years. Steph Curry has been a flopper over the years. Could we, we can go on and on and on and on and on. And this has to stop because it slows the games down and it puts these guys on the foul line eight or nine times a game when they don't belong there. I think this is going to help the game. But again, by minimizing and changing rules, how does this affect certain aspects of the game when it comes down to it? And that's the drama aspect that we get annoyed with as NBA fans, like you, like you especially being a 90s NBA fan, where you didn't have as much of the theatrics on the court, I guess, if you want to call it that way, that LeBron has really brought to that pioneering the flopping. And then now, you, now you're seeing like guys like James Harden really exemplify it. Russell Westbrook does it a lot. Like All these guys have done it to an extent and just really have built their games around it, too. And it's just that is a, a disappointing thing when you look at a sport. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to build your game around trying to go to the free throw line, but you have to build. You don't have to build your entire game of just trying to force shots to draw fouls, shots that are bad. And that's the good thing I think you'll see with this rule in place is the purity of certain shots being able to be made, open shots being a lot more prioritized again, which could help a lot of these guys that are good mid-range shooters but not three-point shooters. And that'll allow spacing to be better. And I think just the whole purity of the game will be a lot better when these guys aren't just flopping and whining for fouls all the time. Could you see it if they're up big or down big? Yeah, okay, you want to pad your stats a little bit, fine. But at least it's going to limit it a little more, which is good. I think the NBA has been trying to follow through with some of the things that they have done over the last couple of years. And obviously they're trying to move forward, making the league better, and adding these rules to the league and to some of the technical ends of some of the violations that they've added over the last couple of years to help the league. But again, with everything that's gone on over the last couple of years and and really this last past year with some of these players like Kyrie Irving, like John Moran, some of these guys that have really taken over the tabloids and the laughing of the league and, and the growth of the league has really, even though when you look at the CBA and, and with all the different contracts and, and TV deals that they've gotten. They've gotten a lot of contract deals. And Adam Silver is obviously helping the league grow. But if you look at the back end to it, has Adam Silver really pushed this forward on helping this league as a whole grow with all these players taking over as the faces, as the organizations have really stepped back and let the players take over for their league? These Younger players have not done that as much, I think, which is a good sign in the right direction for that kind of thing. I'm not saying they don't flop. Everyone, I think everyone, to some extent, flops. But in terms of just having the theatrics really take over the court and also take over the offseason, too, that's a good sign in the right direction as well to really go the NBA back to the like consistently run league it was before when David Stern was there. And was, I don't think it's ever going to get to that. I don't know if it'll ever get to that, but at least it comes to the point where you're not going to have all this drama. I think it's all drama. It's always going to be drama drama and Adam Silver's allowed it and, and I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to implicate these different rules to help the game out and maybe stop some of these players from getting their calls and, and getting to the line and helping out their teams. But where is it going to stop? How is it going to stop? And the only way it's going to stop is if the commissioner steps in and, and besides adding these rinky-dinky rules, these competitions during the offseason with some of the rookies for yeah. Summer League. I call it preseason. Summer League, they have these competitions. And now you're trying to add these competitions during the middle of the season for the NBA where you get a, an automatic playoff pass. I don't understand how this works and how this is going to benefit the NBA. If anything, it's going to hurt the NBA for the growth of what the NBA has really turned into internationally. Now we've finally seen some players really back down on this beat actually a significant issue too it's ruined the pace of the game it's ruined some team offenses we've had many different basketball broadcasters on that have said that they want to improve the pace of the game like they do with baseball but there's so many stoppages that don't need to happen now you also were talking about the coaches challenge to them getting a second one they deserve a second one any sport that has a challenge you get the one rewarded in football you get the third one if it comes in in hockey same kind of thing you'll get rewarded with it later in the game now you don't get your timeout back because the NBA is for whatever reason a seven timeout which is a lot that's fine but they have to be able to not have as many whistles and not have as much drama after the whistle before anyone shoots a free throw. 